and welcome to AVR TV. The topic of this second issue of AVR TV is Atmel's launch of uh, the U new 32-bit microcontroller, the UC3. Uh, I have a special guest here today, Håkon Skar, a Director of uh, Product Marketing. Welcome. Thank you, Eivind. Uh, we are wearing our finest t-shirts today in celebration of this uh, big launch, because this is big stuff, right? Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. With the launch of the UC3 family, Atmel is entering a brand new market with the AVR. So, uh, exactly what kind of product is the UC3? In short, the UC3 is a version of the AVR32 architecture with a three-stage pipeline. It has the peripherals of the AV7000, but the core is simplified and tuned to run from on-chip flash and SRAM. Right. And the SRAM has been tightly coupled to the CPU pipeline in, in some way, hasn't it? Yeah, that's right. The SRAM is very tightly coupled to the uh, CPU, so it runs single cycle. Single cycle access to memory for data and instructions. Right, okay. Uh, further, to what extent is the core simplified uh, compared to the AP7000? Most importantly, we wanted to eliminate the data and instruction caches to make the CPU cheaper without the loss of calculation power. Okay, and what about the MMU? We have also simplified the MMU, so removed the memory management virtual memory, replaced it with a memory protection unit device, which is better suited for this class of device. Uh -huh. Uh, but um, this uh, implies support for lighter OSs than full-fledged uh, Linux. Uh, are there any other changes, uh, changes at all to the instruction set? What about uh, DSP, SIMD, Java? Well, the AVR32 instruction set remains the same, but we have eliminated the SIMD instructions because they are more useful for graphics, and we have eliminated the Java extension in this version of the core. In replacement, you've also added a new line of instructions for atomic read while writes oh. in peripherals. Okay. Uh, something else, uh, high efficiency and low power consumption, th those are key arguments for the AVR32 architecture. Do you already have numbers in place for the UC3 in this regard? Yeah, we do. Uh, we know that the AVR32 UC3A runs at 66 megahertz, performs 80 dry stone MIPS at that speed, and consumes a mere 40 milliamps running there. Mm. And, and these are real numbers. At 3.3 volts? 3.3 volts, yeah. Okay, and thus it is exceeding uh, the, the barrier of 50 MIPS at very reasonable frequencies, uh, giving low power and still running off uh, the on-chip flash. That's right, it runs single cycle off the on-chip flash. Mm, that's great stuff. Uh, moving into target markets and target applications for the UC3 family. Some typical applications for the UC3? Well, you'll find the UC3 in a range of applications, ranging from building control, process automation, security, access control, and your typical communication tasks. Right, so typically tasks where the, the UC3 will perform a serious... Uh, yeah, there will be some serious heavy lifting done by the CPU, work, yeah. but the... Uh, Without the uh, need for graphical user interfaces and... Uh, no, you're right. We uh, You don't have the fancy 16 million color screens here, right. but you have serious heavy lifting still in the processing of these graphics, but you may typically store them on an SD card rather than putting them on the screen immediately. Okay, yeah. So let's take a look at, the, uh, at where the UC3 fits into the current AVR portfolio. When we add the UC3 box to the existing lineup of AVR devices, you'll see that it fits perfectly between the existing Mega AVR on the low end and the AVR32 AP7 on the high-end applications. So what do you get? In the UC3 range, you get powerful peripherals, multi-layer data buses, and the DMA controller from the AP7 family. But you also get the single cycle execution from on-chip flash, the large on-chip memories, and code protection features that we have in the AVR devices. Right. Uh, speaking of product lineup, Hawkum, um we need to address the current uh, roadmap for the UC3. So what are the first pl planned products for the UC3 product family? The first round of launch will include two series of parts, the UC3 A series and the UC3 B series. And specifically on the A series, you'll find a device with 128 to 512 kilobytes of flash, up to 64 kilobytes of SRAM on chip, and a USB on the go interface and Ethernet, Ethernet. interface. Right. Okay, but what about uh, packages and pin count for the UC3A series? The UC3A series will be available in two package options. Mm -hmm. It'll have a 100 pin 
TQFP package okay. and a 144-pin TQFP package where the extra pins will give you an SRAM and SDRAM interface. Okay, so that's what you get for the, for the extra pins. Yeah. Uh, there's also a B series planned, a UC3B. Uh, what are the main differences between the, the A and B series? The B series will have smaller package sizes, less on-chip memories, and you won't get an Ethernet, but you'll still get the USB interface. Okay. The SDRAM will also disappear. Yeah, and you have the same selection of peripherals. Basically, you have still the same selection of peripherals in addition to those I pointed out. Maybe the A series. Okay. Yes. Mm. So the first A series derivative uh, called the UC3 A0512 is already sampling. Yeah, right? that's right. So we have a very promising architecture. We have good performance and power consumption numbers. Mm -hmm. We have parts ready for sampling. Yes. And do we have the tools? We have the tools. We do have the tools. Yeah. Okay. Let's have a look at the tools lineup. If you look at this graphics, you can go with either the IR embedded workbench for AVR32, and we're also launching AVR32 Studio, which integrates with both IR and GCC compilers. So GCC is already ready. Yeah, GCC is ready. And the installer AV of AVR32 Studio will mm. install the GCC toolchain for you. Right. By the way, uh, AVR32 Studio can download it already. It's on the web already. Yep. For debugging, we recommend using the JTAG Ice Mark II. For programming, you can also use the AVR ISP. Okay. And then finally? Finally, the evaluation board. Yes. And for the uh, UC3A launch, we are introducing this board, which is called the EVK1100. Mm -hmm. This gives you uh, easy access to all the peripherals of the chip, and it's the perfect place to start your evaluation. Hmm. And it powers right out of my uh, Macintosh computer. Yeah, it does. You have mm. uh, an Ethernet port, the USB on the go port, you have the device, pots, screen. So this board really packs more than the usual mm. starter kit from Atmel. And with uh, the blue LED display, it must be every engineer's dream. It's sexy, right? isn't it? Mm, it's nice. <laughs> it also comes in a very nice box, mind you. I brought it just to, to show it right here because it's, uh, it's one in, in a new series of uh, designs. It's just a product box, but it doesn't hurt if it looks good. It's one of the best pictures of you, I think. <laughs> 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 Look kind of uh, stiff, but... Anyway, uh, Atmel will also introduce the SDK 600, which is an upgrade of the popular SDK 500. Um, it will support both the entire range of uh, AVR and the UC3 range of microcontrollers. Um, but Hakon, the perhaps the biggest thing uh, with the AP7000 was the ability to, r to run Linux, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So um, while UC3 is not a typical uh, Linux device, wh what are the options for the UC3 in terms of operating system? Well, there is a lightweight version of the uh, Linux operating system that can mm -hmm. run without a multi-memory uh, management unit. But okay. more importantly for the UC3 users, we think that lighter OSs will uh, play a bigger part. Typically, we expect customers to run ThreadX from ExpressLogic and uh, FreeRTOS, which is a very basic scheduler. Mm. And we have what we got, uh, we're also working with Micrium, Micrium on a port of the UCOS2 operating right. system. Okay. Um, thank you, Håkon. I think that's it. And uh, congratulations on the launch. Thank you very much, Ivan. Mm -hmm. Thank you for watching. Welcome back. Take care and bye-bye.